What's going on everybody? Ben here, player.net, and today we're taking a look at the Raid Max Viper GX2. Now some of you may remember, I reviewed the first um, Viper GX. It was black and had green accent and it looked very nice. Like it kind of looked kind of venomous, I guess you could say, as it was a snake. I mean, that's kind of the general impression I got from it. But today, we have the second version so let's just start off with the box quickly and see what we've got um, on the box here there's a nice version of the case, uh, nice image of the case here with a viper to the um, right of it of course as we saw it's got the viper GX2 here the raid max logo with the URL to their website down in the bottom right hand corner moving around quickly uh, one side lets us know about the external and internal drive bays uh, the system board it takes, it's compatible with ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX, so that's great. Um, it's got seven PCI expansion slots, and it's got three USB 3.0 slots, and of course the audio jacks on the front. Moving around to the back of the box, we can now of course see a bit better images of the case itself and some of the features that it has to offer. It of course has rail slide technology for 2.5 and 3.5 inch hard drives, um, a unique screwless 5.25 inch drive bay, supports 240 mil radiators up in the top for those of you looking to use some water cooling, especially all in one coolers and all that fun stuff. Again, as with the first version, this one's going to have a colored honeycomb side panel see through window, which was a real nice feature that I liked in the first version myself. Now as we can see here, it can support up to a 415 millimeter graphics card if you go ahead and remove some of the cages, but we'll take a closer look at that in the review. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open this bad boy up, take it out, and we can get a bit closer look at it. Looking at the front, and we can get our first glimpse of the orange highlights here. Now, it's not overly done, and if I recall, it's a bit less than the first version as they did with the green. There seemed to be a lot more green than we see orange on this case, but nonetheless, it still looks very nice. We, of course, have the Raid Max logo here in the front um, center, uh, the orange accenting here, nice intake vent down here. It's actually a nice hard mesh type looking thing. And again, we see the 2.5 inch hot swap bay right up here at the top. Now another thing as per before is we have the door that opens and it reveals our three um, optical drive bays or you can put water cooling reservoirs in there or whatever have you. Removing the front is as easy as getting your hand underneath and just giving it a nice little tug which then reveals the inside. We can go ahead and uh, change the fans out, add another fan, get things set up how we want. Looking at the top of the case, and it is very similar to that of the first version, we of course have our LED indicator lights here, reset and power buttons. Then over on the right hand side we have our audio inputs, the mic and headphones, and we have two USB 3's. But what's nice is they actually have gone ahead and included little dust covers that are easily removable by just pulling them out. And what this allows users to do is when the port is not in use, you can go ahead and put that in there and allow, um, block it from dust getting in there, which is a nice little feature. You know, I know some people say da da da, but at the end of the day, it also adds a nice bit of aesthetic taste to it because instead of seeing the blue USB ports, it's covered in black. Now the other nice thing about the top of the case is it is easily, removable by lifting it up and then it gives us access to install a 240 millimeter radiator for uh, water cooling. I suppose you could do some sort of custom loop in there if you wanted but I would imagine it's more designed for an all-in-one cooler and as you can see as well it's also a bit raised up from the top of the case uh, allowing just that more extra room to get a couple more fans in there on the top of it without it being too far down deep inside the case itself. Again, moving around to the side, very similar to that of the original model. We have the small 
uh, tinted colored honeycomb window that will allow a little bit of view inside the case to see some of the components. And we also see again that raised up design that goes around the window which while may not be too important on this side it may come in handy on the back side. On to the back and we can of course see the pre-installed exhaust fan with two holes with rubber grommets included for water cooling tubes to allow access to the outside of the case. Uh, there is also the cutout for the motherboard tray, seven PCI expansion bays with a bit of an extra ventilation area to the right just to allow for a bit better airflow, a bit better cooling. And then of course we have the cutout for the bottom mounted PSU. And we can also notice on either side a pair of hand, a couple of handles that will allow us to take the side panels off a bit easier. As I like to call it the rear side panel because I don't really know what other name to give it to or the back side panel, the secondary side panel, whatever you prefer to call it. Again, it has that nice raised up design which could help uh, allow for a bit better cable management, a bit more room behind the motherboard tray. Except for this time where the window was on the other side is just a bit of a raised out area that again it just adds to the aesthetics and hopefully it should allow just that little bit extra more room for users to put their cables behind the motherboard tray which is always helpful. The bottom of the Viper GX2 of course features four feet to raise uh, the case off the ground to allow for a bit better airflow and make sure to get it off the carpet. And it also has two individual uh, dust protectors in two different places to help from dust getting in from the PSU. Taking a look at the inside, let us go ahead and start off with the hard drive bays. We have the 3.5 inch and the 2.5 inch hard drive cages which are also easily removable to allow for longer graphics cards and other hardware to be installed. Above these we have three toolless 5.25 inch optical drive bays. Moving over to the motherboard tray, we can see two cutouts for cable management and one big cutout to allow for easy CPU cooler installation or changing uh, if that's your thing. We can also notice that some of the motherboard risers are already pre-installed and should serve us well if we are installing an ATX motherboard. On to the back, we can notice the pre-installed exhaust fan, the seven PCI expansion bays, and again, the bottom mounted cutout for the power supply, which also has its own vented area and a couple of rubber feet to help with vibration noise. Just to the right of the power supply vent is another little vented area to allow for better airflow. And also, it looks as if you may be able to install a 3.5 inch hard drive here if you so decided to remove the hard drive cages. Moving on around to the back side of the motherboard tray, Nothing too spectacular going on here. We of course have a few clips so where we can uh, zip tie our PSU cables to help route them out the way. And there is also an added little extra area with an indent to allow for a few cables to be piled up here to keep them out of the way and allow us to put the side panel back on with ease. So that concludes my quick overview on the Raid Max Viper GX2. Please stay tuned in the near future for the full review that will go live on player.net. And as always, thank you guys for watching and please check back in the near future for more content.